This episode is brought to you by Tor Books. Across all of fiction, elves are given subtle yet powerful superhuman abilities. They have enhanced eyesight, and enhanced lifespans, and enhanced strength. One of the more famous elves in fiction, the Lord of the Rings' Legolas, has all of these abilities and one more curious elven trait. He can walk on top of snow and other surfaces in ways that he shouldn't be able to. How dense is a wood elf? <laughs> the ability in question comes from both the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring book, and film. In those, Legolas can tread on top of snow, quote, his feet making little imprint in the snow, while his companions have to trudge through it waist deep like dummies. If we put spells or magic aside for a moment, that has to mean that Legolas is ultra light, and that's something that we can figure out. First, we need to know why things sink in snow. When your foot presses down into some sick powder, you can imagine layers of material sliding and moving past each other. This is called shearing. So when your foot presses down into snow, you are overcoming snow's sheer strength. An average strength of averages that I could find is around 3,100 pascals, meaning that every square meter of snow can take 3,100 newtons of force before sliding past itself. And so we have to estimate how much snow is gonna shear underneath the feet of Legolas. I'm gonna assume that Legolas's feet are circles because that's easier, each with an average surface area of 100 square centimeters. Now, what is the area where the snow is gonna slide past itself? Well, that's how deep we want Legolas's feet to sink. <laughs> so, for that, I'm gonna assume leaving little imprint means his feet sink no deeper than around five centimeters or two inches underneath the snow's surface. And the inside of this cylinder is gonna be our shear area. Now we have everything we need to calculate just how much Legolas would have to weigh to only sink five centimeters into the snow. And that force will equal the circumference of the circle we are assuming Legolas' foot is, multiplied by the depth he is sinking into the snow, or the thickness, T, multiplied by the sheer strength of the snow, 3,100 pascals. And that gives us just 54 newtons, or 12 pounds. That's how heavy Legolas would have to be. This is light enough to ride on a giant eagle. We could estimate Legolas's density right now, but before we do, we made a lot of assumptions, so let's double check our numbers with the way that we give ourselves elvish walking powers. Unless my eyes are cheated by some spell. <laughs> That's so lame. We're all looking at the same thing. How could just your eyes be cheated? Do you see that white horse over there? You could have said that. Unless my, uh, no, no, you're looking right at it. Assuming that sinking in snow is just like punching a hole through some material is very simplistic. It doesn't take into account how snow packs or how snow can have different densities over different layers. So let's instead turn to a study that actually looked at people moving over snow. That study was submitted to the Western Snow Conference by one Philip Farns, and it looked at how different animals, including humans, sank into snow based on the pressure they exerted while walking over that snow. According to the relationship between walking pressure and sinking depth that they found, to sink only five centimeters into the snow, as we're assuming Legolas does, only allows a human foot to press down with five kilopascals or 5,000 pascals of pressure. Now, if we divide this by the area of one foot that we assumed for Legolas, we should get a check on Legolas's weight if we don't want him to sink too far, and this gives us 50 newtons. We calculated 54. Nailed it. Let's do one more check. You can't change your mass or local gravity, so the only thing you can do to walk over snow like an elf is to wear snowshoes, which increases the surface area of your foot, thereby lowering the pressure on the snow and the shearing force on the snow. Now, 
According to the Farn study, they found that a human walking over snow with snowshoes produces six kilopascals of pressure. Now, if we multiply this value times a decently sized snowshoe, we get around 830 newtons or 180 pounds, which could definitely be the weight of a human man, which according to the data again, would only sink into snow about five centimeters. This all means that if Legolas indeed had the weight that we calculated, then he would be able to walk over snow as if he was a full-sized man, full-weighted man, wearing snowshoes. <laughs> that's, that's amazing considering everything we just assumed. Oh, we, oh, we're doing science. Put my shield down those stairs. Ah! Oh! So our weight value is correct. Now we can figure out just how dense Legolas is. Legolas has to be around 50 newtons in weight if he doesn't want to sink into snow more than a few centimeters. So if we divide this value by a value for the body's volume, maybe 70 liters, we will get the density. And we get just 73 kilograms for every cubic meter of Legolas stuff. I need to give you an idea of just how ethereal this is. This is 10 times less dense than water, meaning that Legolas would float on any water surface. Ladies, dudes, me maybe. It's like a little quiver. That's the value for density of Elvis. Elvis, has anyone thought of that? But this still doesn't really visualize it. This is silica-based aerogel. An aerogel is a synthetic material derived from gels that is amazingly lightweight per volume. It can sit atop flower petals without disturbing them. Meaning that Legolas could do the same. Ladies, maybe me again. Legolas could even lay atop grass without bending the blades, just like the books say. But look back at that snow walking scene. It doesn't really look like Legolas's feet are sinking centimeters into the snow. No, it looks like they aren't sinking into it at all. If we change all of our estimations to be closer to what we actually see, then his density gets closer to that of graphene aerogel, which is so light for its volume that it makes this photo look photoshopped. It's actually lighter than air. It's so light, in fact, that if Legolas actually had this density and could move faster than these blocks were falling, which he can't, but if he could, it would make this possible. And that's nonsense. So how dense is Legolas given his ability to walk over snow without leaving an impression? Well, if there was no magic involved, then elf stuff would have to be one of the lightest materials known to humankind. Or elf kind, or hobbit kind, or dwarf kind, you get what I mean. In fact, he'd have to be even lighter than we calculated because when you walk or when you run, you are pressing down with more force on a surface than you actually weigh. So if he was walking through a field in Middle Earth, he wouldn't walk through it because he could walk on it. Or you could throw him like a paper airplane <laughs> because science. Oh, I see Sauron. Oh, he's looking at my body. I'm not as dense as those elf boys. Leave me alone. <laughs> Twenty! Twenty-one! Twenty-two! Look how low the lower coefficient of friction is! Ooh! Nope. I'm gonna do it. Too fast! Too fast! This episode is brought to you by Tor Books, the proud publisher of Autonomous by Annalee Newitz. Described by Neil Stevenson as being to biotech and AI what Neuromancer was to the internet, and praised by William Gibson as genuinely thrilling and new, Autonomous explores a fundamental question. Is freedom possible in a culture where everything can be owned? Don't miss Autonomous, the highly anticipated science fiction debut from Annalee Newitz, the founder of the science fiction blog io9.com, the former editor-in-chief of Gizmodo, and current tech culture editor of Ars Technica. She lives in San Francisco, and Autonomous is her debut novel. She's also the writer of Scatter, Adapt, and Remember How Humans Will Survive a Mass Extinction. Autonomous is available now wherever books are sold. 
Thank you so much for watching, Laura. If you want even more weirdness, check out Musquatch with my colleague Dan Casey. And if you want even more science, you can subscribe to Alpha at projectalpha.com where you can watch the space program and also get this show two days earlier. Thanks. Ha <laughs>